Continuing on with League 11 of Duskmorn drafts. All right, first card, Peer Past the Veil. This card, draw X, where X is the number of card types among cards in your graveyard. So Delirium, depending on whether you try to be dedicated to Delirium or not, I found in this format you usually have between like three and four types. So this is reasonable. It's also a pretty good card. It is in two colors, but that's fine. There is also, uh, obviously, there's Veld Crypt Cadaver Lab, Fear of Exposure, Norin, and Wildfire Wicker Folk in the pack, which I think are all the best cards. And then the rest of this is kind of just whatever. And I haven't gotten to play with this yet, so I think I want to try it. So let's go ahead and take Pure Past the Veil. And then hopefully the Wicker Folk wheels. It might, since it's two different colors and not Boros. Marvin. There's also Drag to the Roots and Norin. So the thing is, like, the activated abilities that Marvin can use is not actually much. Like, I've even had decks with Marvin before and have found that he usually either has no abilities to actually copy, or if he does, it doesn't even matter. So between that and Norin, I would just rather have Norin. And then this is off color, the Drag to the Roots, and then nothing else in the pack I really want. I guess there's Cryptid Inspector. Never face down permanent, you control enters, and whenever this or another permanent turns face up, put a plus one counter on it. This one's reasonable, but Norin is also good. Norin's specifically good with Arabella in the Boros deck. I don't know if he's good outside of that. But I do like the fact that he lets you like attack with your manifest guys, and then if they block them, you can get them back, including even if they're not creatures. So I'll go ahead and take Norin. All right, Grievous Wound, which is not really that good. Like, it's fine, but it's not good enough to switch colors. But on the other hand, everything else here is not great either. There's Break Down the Door, which is fine. Glimmer Seeker, which is, in, which is good, but is in the wrong colors. And there's Murder, which is also good, but is also in the wrong colors. Only played a couple of real-life drafts, but, not, but have been having a lot of fun with the set. Done the best and had the most fun with Blue White Eerie. I have not gotten to draft Blue White Eerie yet. I have drafted Gruul, but I haven't drafted Peer Past the Veil. So, let's see. Break Down the Door in this set... Hit exiling enchantments is almost the same thing as murder. So I think I'm fine with this. So yeah, let's just take break down the door and see where we go from here. All right, dra another drag to the roots. There is also house cartographer. So the thing is all the survival creatures, if you're not exactly Selesnia, they all suck. There's also monstrous emergence, which is a decent uh, removal spell. I'm not sure how good this guy is. I haven't drafted him a single time. Maybe I just take him for that reason. This is also just a 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. I don't know how that compares to this guy. If we're going the Delirium route, it also means I really want to lean into the Manifest Red route. Fixing is good enough in the set that Jun Delirium is pretty easy to put together if you want to splash for the Roots. All right, you've convinced me. Let's play Roots. Uh, Inferno is really the only thing here. The only other card is Anthropede. And man, there's another Murder. How bad is removal in this set if these things just keep getting passed? I really don't want Inferno. In fact, I want it so little that I would rather take Murder and try to splash the red. There's also the Defiled Crypt and, lab and uh, Cadaver Lab, which I'm not even sure whether this or Murder is better. Yeah, let's take Murder. Cracked Skull, Boiler Bilge's Ripper, Watchdog, and a dual land in the colors that I'm not. Well, this guy's kind of mediocre, as is the Cracked Skull, so I will just play the Watchdog. Coordinated Clobbering or Manifest Dread. Tap one or two untapped creatures you control to each deal damage equal to their power to target creature in front of goals. All right. Um, huh. All right. One mana removal. I guess I'll take it. And this is very, very replaceable. Coordinated clobbering. Winter misanthropic guide. Is this card even good? It's a four mana three, four ward two, which is not great. Upkeep each player draws two, which is also not great. And the delirium part is like, feels irrelevant to me. I don't know. I guess we have fewer opportunities to draft this than manifest dread. You know what? I don't even think it's as good as manifest dread. We're just going to take Manifest Dread. Another Norin, which I wouldn't be too keen on normally, but it's like the only thing in the pack I care about, unfortunately. Hero's Lost Teeth is just nothing. Just doesn't matter. If, if black winds up being our splash color, that's going to be really awkward. But if red winds up being our splash color, we can't really splash one drops. So we'll see how this goes. All right, Cryptid Inspector. Absolutely taking that. There's also this guy, but we're at least going to be green. People generally end up with low enough hand sizes once you can cast him that his hand size reduction won't do anything. That's what I thought, which basically means he's a 4 mana 3, 4 ward 2 that has each player draws a, two cards on upkeep, which like, I guess technically you're both even at that point. This wield, whenever channel player, yeah, I've used this before and it's been quite mediocre. So let's just take Bale Merc Leech. We're in, we're in green and one other color, whichever one that winds up being. 
grab the prize is the only red card is the only jund card here so i'll just take this i'm probably not even going to play it but i'll take that this is the only black card so i'm going to cut black off i sincerely doubt i would switch to blue at this point i don't know this is not really a signal actually let's just take this living phone all right Comeback wrong is perfectly fine. There's also Glassworks. Here's the thing. I think these cards are about comparable. So the real question is, which color am I more likely to wind up as my second color? And as far as that goes, I really don't know. And one is an enchantment for Delirium, which matters as well. Like the rooms and the enchantments matter a lot in this set. It feels so weird to not take the rare, but I do think Glasswork is actually the pick. All right, Leyline that we're not going to play. Wildfire Wickerfolk. There's also, oh wait, Scorching Dragonfire in the pack. All right, we're not passing that. Scorching Dragonfire is unironically, like probably the best removal spell in the set. It's so crazy because it exiles. All right, I'm probably not going to play this Leech and I'm probably also, I might not even play any of the black cards. I'm, it's very unlikely I'm going to play Murder at this point either, but we'll see how it goes. All right, take the Dragonfire. Another Norin. I'm not going to take a third Norin. Oh, there's another Dragonfire. Well, we're taking that. Okay, let's move all, let's move the black cards out. I find it very unlikely that we're going to play those. If I wound up playing any of them, it would probably be dragged to the roots if we can splash black. What would I be happy to wheel here? Uh, Emergence, Soul Rager, maybe the Branch Snapper. Ragged Playmate would be okay. Leyline of Hope, don't care. Hand that feeds is always good. There's also Terramorphic to get a land into the graveyard, but I actually think this doesn't matter because I feel like a lot of the Manifest Dread cards, you'll just hit a land anyway and you can bin it. So Hand that feeds it is. Rip Spawn Hunter, and the only other cards in the pack are the Cautious Survivors, which are mediocre, and Turn Inside Out, which is also fine. Hmm. All right. I don't feel like I'm going to wind up with the white to be able to splash this, but at the same time, I would rather have the option of getting this than take any of the other cards here. All right. Uh, uh Clown? Because the, inf like, amazingly, five mono removal is just not good. There's also Long Neck, which is an enchantment, actually. But two toughness just absolute like anything with two toughness sucks because everybody manifests stuff. Between the two, I would rather have the clown. Like just on terms of stats. Like if I didn't care about delirium, I'd rather have the clown. Oh wait, under the skin? Oh, I didn't even see that. How did my mind blank out on that one? We're obviously taking under the skin. And there's two baseball packs and baseball bats in that pack. Hello, Gloom Lake Verge, which I am not going to play. How much is this ticks? Gloom Lake. It is 0.88 ticks. All right, good enough for me. Got to get those ticks back somehow. Obviously, I wasn't taking that. I take this. Cursed Recording. I think we actually have enough for that to work. Even if we didn't, the only other card in the pack to take is say its name. We have, let's see, we've got Clobbering, Two Dragonfires, Manifest Dread, Under the Skin, Break Down the Door, Peer Past the Veil. All right, Cursed Recording it is. Yum, yum, yum. All right, well, I guess we'll take this green guy now. Wait, there's this or there's Glimmer Light? Uh, we don't have an artifact yet. Although, to be fair, we don't have that many enchantments either. Screw it. I'll take Glimmer Light. The long necks are just just unbelievable. Like, they're just surprisingly mediocre. It's kind of embarrassing how bad they are. I'm, I don't even want to play Anthropy. I'll just take... Well, is this even worth anything? Uh, sort of. Barely. All right. Soul Rager it is. We have one room, so we'll need more rooms. Uh, sure. Cut that. You know what? No. Hard Nest Squirt. Okay, this guy. All right. We need a third pet. We have, we've got some decent stuff going on. Ghost Vacuum. This has actually been surprisingly not very good. There is also Ticket Booth, Beastie Beatdown, Break Down the Door. Uh, those are the big ones. Oh, Flesh Burrower. Ghost Vacuum is actually worth ticks, though. And again, you know, you might not, you might not know it, but I'm not made a tick. So if we can get a card that's worth two and a half ticks, we're going to take it. There's a ton of stuff in this pack that I would be otherwise want to play. I don't think Ghost Vacuum's even good. I, we had it in a previous draft, and... It just sucks. Like, even if you get it early, it usually just sucks. It's only really, like, an actually a sideboard card if you're playing against an opposing deck that either is a Delirium deck or has, like, reanimation spells. Anyway, if it wasn't this, I would probably just take Beastie Beatdown, although there's a lot of actually good picks here. I would be happy with most of the Gruel cards in this pack. All right, Ghost Vacuum, move that over here. What do we got? Marina Vendril. Well, we just did that, and she sucks, and we're not, we can't even splash for her. Literally almost nothing else is playable in this pack. We've got Inferno and we've got Rip Chain Razorkin. And between the two, they're both kind of mediocre. So I guess I'll take the removal. How many spells do we have? One, two, three, uh, let's see, four, five. Oh, I can copy it with uh, Cursed Recording. Never mind, that clinches it. That gives me better 
better synergy than doing the other thing. All right, take that. Okay, Pyroclasm. Uh, doesn't that kill most of our stuff, though? I mean, I suppose I could use it as a sideboard card. The other thing to pick would be Violent Urge. I feel like I probably have too many spells, though. There's also Fear of Exposure. I could just take that. So we have six, no, seven non-creatures, like things that can't make creatures, which is already a lot. And even some of the things that make creatures like Glimmer Light are not really making that great of creatures. So we probably just need to just prioritize creatures. So we'll take Fear of Exposure. Trial of Agony. Choose two target creatures controlled by the same opponent. The player chooses one of those creatures. It deals five damage to that creature and the other can't block. And then the rest of the cards kind of suck. All right, sure. I'll take this. Fear of being hunted or cryptid inspector. Well, we don't have any of the things that go with this. So typically with this card, you need like a good amount of ways to give it first strike or something. And we don't have that. How many face down things do we have? We've got... Breakdown, Under the Skin, Manifest. Not that many. So yeah, I'll just take Fear in that case. It's also an enchantment, which matters for Delirium. The Mind Skinner, or just take another Fear, or Saw. Whenever a creature attacks, you may sack a permanent other than that creature, or Saw, if you do draw a card. Nah, we'll just take Fear of Being Hunted. Exercise, okay, we can't, we literally actually can't play any of these cards. So just take an Uncommon. <laughs> another Norin, we're definitely not playing that. All right, Monstrous Emergence, sure. Take the monster. Untimely, Flesh Burrower, absolutely taking Flesh Burrower. Can't play any of these cards. I guess I can play Long Neck, so we'll take that. More nothing. Okay. Cut the Tunnel Surveyor to make an eerie player sad. All right. Group creature separate, and then this is all wrong. So even though Break Down the Door is usually, like, you'll probably use it as a removal spell, it is sort of a creature. And Under the Skin is a creature. Glimmer Light is also basically a creature, even though it is a small creature. And then this is three mana. So hang on, we got to shift this around. All right, we only have one door, which means I don't want Soul Rager. And then we only need to cut one more thing. Huh, how many actually creatures do I have? Because Glimmer Light and these spells that manifest are not creatures. So I have actually only 11 creatures total, which means Clobbering and, oh, this is, this is here. Clobbering and Emergence are going to have a harder time working, but I still don't think I cut them. So this is 2, 7, 14, 15. So I would rather cut a spell. So what is our worst spell? Or I could just say forget this guy because he kind of sucks. In one of my pre-release decks, Simic, I had only two non-land cards in the deck that weren't a creature or produced a creature with Manifest Dread. That is definitely interesting. All right, so the thing is I don't want to cut any of these spells, but if I was going to cut any of them, it would be one of the fight spells or Trial of Agony. So choose two target creatures controlled by the same opponent. Player chooses one of them. Deal five to that creature, and the other can't block this turn. So basically, you pick your two, you pick your opponent's two best creatures, and they sacrifice the le the second best one. Essentially, that's what this says. It's been unbelievable to me how much. Like, I guess I just haven't drafted in a while, but there's all sorts of heuristics that I used to believe about drafts in limited environments that apparently no longer hold true. Like four mana four four is just not good. Five mana unconditional instant speed removal spell is just not good. I've, been, I've drafted this guy a bunch of times, and I've basically never been happy to play him. I think he's. I think this guy has sucked every single time I've got him on the field. So maybe we just cut him. I also had two Valgavoth's Onslaughts and almost decked myself twice with them. Went undefeated. That sounds like an amazing deck. The dream is cursed recording your Valgavoth's Onslaught, which I almost did in a previous draft, but didn't quite get there. Anyway, let's do this. And then it, I'm not sure which color we're going to be. Or are we going to have more of? So we have 11 here, 10 here, but we have more green creatures than red creatures, but we also have more red. We have double red pips on the fears. So I guess we're going to be pro mountain. All right, add basics. And no, it's not that heavy. Nine to eight. What does it say on the side here? Use this paint to add basic lands. Suggest lands will suggest a configuration that would bring your deck up to the maximum. Okay, all right, let's do it. You know, leave it to me. I release a video saying, yeah, I'm burned out. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm slowing down. You're, you're not going to get this many videos. And then I do, we're on draft number 11 in four days. Combat tricks are way poorer in this set than they've been in a while. So survivals are riskier to trigger if you don't have a way to tap your own stuff outside combat. Are they though? Because they seem really good. Like jump scare. Well, I guess one mana combat tricks are still good. So if you're referring to like two mana combat tricks and up, I would agree with that. I basically don't want any of those. But the one mana ones are great. Jump Scare, Shard Mage's Rescue. 
the first strike one violent urge turn inside out's okay too it's most you mostly don't use it as a combat trick though you mostly use it as a lava spike so far i think that the the manifest dread mechanic is the best thing about this set for limited rooms are also pretty neat all right we're on the draw for round one all right hand looks fine we've got multiple different plays on two I guess it's all relative. I've been way happier to block stuff in this set than I've been for the most past sets this year. Seems like a fun set to draft. I haven't had a chance to play since I'm still drafting Mystery Booster 2. How is Mystery Booster? Terramorphic. Going it grabs Forest. All right, Forest go. Oblivious Bookworm. 2-3. Beginning of end step, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Unless a permanent entered the battlefield face down under your control this turn. Or you turned a permanent face up this turn. Huh. I feel like we probably just want to dragon fire that. So it's essentially a looter that you don't even have to tap. I think I'd be way happier just killing this. A tapped dual land in another color. Opponent doesn't attack. All right, well, before you go to your end step, try to murder this. It is thus murdered. All right, well, now that the field is clear, let us slam our fear of being hunted. Go forth and attack the opponent fear. All right, land number four. Gremlin tamer. Unable to scream... No, our one way to kill this. All right, well, they don't even have to block this with Norin. Okay, so, huh, I guess I can go, well, I can kill this if I, so I was thinking I have multiple options. I can go Norin Fear of Exposure, tapping Norin and this guy. I can go Manifest, no, I can't play, if I play a green card, I can't play Coordinated Clobbering. So I almost certainly just want to kill Gremlin Tamer. So if I go Hand That Feeds, Hand That Feeds, Norin, Clobbering, shoot this guy. I guess just Norin shoot him, hand that feeds to block the gremlin token. We don't fight, right? They just go one-sidedly. Each deal damage equal to their power to target creature and opponent controls. Okay, so Norin, clobbering, choose one or two target untapped creatures you control. Choose target creature and opponent controls. Done. All right, so dead, cast hand, and over to them. Another tap land, and opponent is not doing anything they could have that uh draw to make a glimmer thing i guess so i'm choked on green mana so let's see let's go to combat and let's just attack with hand thanks for the sub gambit cod i didn't see your sub in the chat though does it not notify me mystery booster 2 has been great so far the old cards bring back memories and some of the playtest cards are hilarious swing with hand all right so nothing on their part then we'll go fear tap 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 Vanish from sight the fear. Um, I think I'm fine putting it on top. Although, hmm, there's a lot better cards I could be drawing. They just don't have anything, but like there's plenty of things they could play where this would become irrelevant. And we really need to draw, like, we can't be choked on only one spell a turn. All right, I'll put it on the bottom. They did not put the surveil card in their graveyard. Six mana. Uh-oh. Slavering branch snapper. Yeah, so it would have been irrelevant against that. Thank goodness I bottomed it. Oh, look, a thing that kills that. Well, although I can't play it. I could play Flesh Burrower and have Death Touch for it, even though it has Trample. That would hold it back. So yeah, let's do that. So Flesh Burrower go. You know what? That was incorrect. I should have attacked with both of these, and then whichever one it blocked, I could just Norn them out. So I could have gotten three damage in there. Oh, man. This is not going well. Wicker Folk Thresher. They got three cards. Okay, well, we finally hit another card. I can attack into them with Death Touch, but that doesn't matter. So I'm probably better off just holding up Inferno and then killing one of these or I can kill one of them now and attack with flesh burrower plus another creature but then I'm still losing the ray they don't have a no they do have a creature in the graveyard so if I kill slavering band snapper and I go swing swing right they are not going to block then they attack back I guess they are at less life than I am hmm all right inferno branch snapper it dies then we'll swing with the twos trigger death touch here the argument for killing this instead is if they do manage to hit Delirium on their turn, then they can start getting cards off of this. I guess they don't have an enchantment yet, so let's see. If they attack and I block, then they hit Delirium. Glimmer Light, Equip, Swing. All right, so block here. We each get Delirium. There is an argument to just taking it, but I want to get Hand that feeds up as well. Moves Glimmer Light to the Gremlin token, sure. Ooh, I can Under the Skin and get back Fear, but that's it. Huh. Okay, so swing Norin if it gets blocked here. Like, I don't want to Norin out my stuff. I also want to be able to potentially manifest things. So if I go swing, swing, they would either have to double block hand or they have to block Flesh Burrower. But I'm fine with either of those results. Yeah, all right. Combat, swing here. Trigger, trigger. So become a 4-2 with Death Touch and Menace. And the other one's just a Death Toucher. 2-2. Two, two. 
All right, so they're gonna trade off with Flesh Burrow. That's fine, resolve this, don't damage. Go to six, then we go Manifest Dread. All right, uh, Glimmer Light into the graveyard. I guess I don't have a land in the graveyard yet, so does it really matter? Put Forest under here, that's fine. And then under the skin, Long Neck under here, and then get back Fear of Being Hunted. Oh, I guess it does matter because of Norin, but a Glimmer Light is like, who cares? So they got two creatures in play. I can go fear, swing all. They go block, block. They take a bunch. This seems like a desperation move to me. Although equipping a glimmer light ahead of time is weird. All right, they hit a land off of it. No blocks. Bashful beastie. Okay, they only have two creatures though. They're dead. Fear, combat, attack with everything. They've got two blocks and then they take lethal. All right. So did I see anything that changes what I want to do? They technically, the, the Wicker Folk has Delirium triggers. I don't think just that alone is reason enough for me to want to bring in Ghost Vacuum. I want to see more Delirium stuff from them before I do that. And then aside from that, I don't really want to side anything in. I guess, is there a card that is in my main deck that is like so mediocre against them that I don't care about it and would rather just replace it with Ghost Vacuum? I don't think that's the case either. Although maybe you could make the case for like the Watchdog since they have Glimmer Light and uh, Gremlin Tamer. So they make 1-1 one, one tokens. All right, let's run it back. No green in this hand is pretty uh, terrible. Don't think we can keep that. Molt. All right, we can keep that. And we're putting away Glimmer Light is I think the worst card here. So let's put that away. Dual land. Land back to them. Island. Watchdog. Bend to land. All right, let's also Watchdog. Trigger. Uh, we don't need that, but that. Third land. Watchdog attacks. Not gonna block that. 17. Three mana for, uh, go get a land. Okay, sure. So now, we're just gonna kill this. They're one turn away from unlocking this part of the room, right? So, we don't need to break it down yet. So right now, let's just play Glassworks. So kill your dude, surveil, bend a land, swing with the watchdog. They go to 17, then it's their turn. Cycle Branch Snapper. Get a land. Play of the land. Patchwork Beastie. Okay, so if I wait for them to unlock this, then with the unlock trigger on the stack, I can't respond to it. So I have to kill it before they try to unlock it. So combat, swing. I guess I stop them in their upkeep. Just try to do it then. All right, so the dog hits them. Then we play Norin. Then over to them. And then we'll let the Beastie trigger resolve first and then shoot it. All right. Exile and enchantment. Exile that one. And it's gone. Bashful Beastie. It's a four. Ooh. So if I do this, then I choose both of them, and then they'll just have their Patrick Beastie die, and then this can't block for the turn. That's fine. So choose two target creatures, this one and this one. So the one you pick is the one that gets damaged, right? No, they sacked their Bashful Beastie. Who knows if that was intentional or not? I doubt it. Maybe they did it just so they could block. I don't know. Doesn't seem like a great move on their part, though. Uh, do they have Delirium yet? No, not even close. So choose a creature we control. Choose a creature you control, and then it's target their guy, pay the mana, then choose our guy, kill your guy. It was in fun Insidious Fungus. All right, go to combat, swing. Unfortunately, we're like really low on cards. They're four to our one, and we don't have a great way forward from here. Cycles Dagger Maw, really, even though they were only one land away from casting it. Okay. They still only have two card types. All right, go to combat. Swing. Vanish from insight on the dog. Sure. Put the dog on the bottom. Why in the world wouldn't you just use that and then wait for a turn? They've been surgical sweet. Okay. Oh, now they have delirium. All right. I guess we're exiling Norin. All right. Cast Norin. Cast Flesh Borrower. Over to them. Patrick Beastie Trigger. Choose to kept it. Or no, they don't get to see it, right? They just chose not to mill. Bounce Flesh Borrower. Spinning a land. No attacks with the patchwork. Back to us. All right. Uh, I can't attack into patchwork, so... I don't think playing my creatures out even matters, actually. I think I'm better off just just getting Shattered Yard going. Yeah, let's just do that. Unlock Shattered Yard. Off to bed. Nice to see you stream. Cheers. Thanks for showing up, Hutterson. Hope you have a good night's sleep. No attacks. Because the thing is, like, even if I play Hand That Feeds plus Flesh Brower this turn, I, I'm not even doing any additional damage to them, really, because they just still have all this stuff. Oh, it was Gremlin Tamer? Yeah, now I'm definitely glad that I just flipped over Shattered Yard, although it's going to take quite a while to kill them. I'm pretty confident they can turn this game around before this damage matters. Unable to scream on Norin, and then 
Swing, yeah, and then snow blocks, I guess. All right, cast hand that feeds. I guess I should play around the pay two counter spell. So land flesh borrower, and then over to them. I think I don't actually have a creature in my yard for the types, so it kind of matters maybe blocking with Norin. The only reason I didn't was because I didn't want the gremlin token to just have a free attack. And we're still two card types away anyway. No attacks from them. Back to us. Drew Cursed Recording, which we can't even play. Is it worth it to attack them? Mm, almost certainly not. Actually, okay. So, okay. Norn doesn't have any abilities right now, so that's irrelevant. I don't have Delirium, so the hand doesn't trigger. So I get Death Touch. But they can still just trade both of their guys. If they trade Gremlin Tamer, that's fine. If they have an instant speed enchantment, then they just make two Gremlin tokens. I guess I attack. And then... They have to trade if they want. Okay, yeah, let's attack. Swing, swing, flesh borrower, trigger. Like, what am I going to get ambushed with here that I wouldn't get ambushed with if they were attacking me? Gremlin Tamer on flesh borrower. And that's it. All right, sure. And they took more damage, so I'm good with that. All right, puts them down the clock even further. So they just have two cards that they can't use. This is confusing. Chose not to mill. I'm assuming they just don't have anything else graveyard related at this point, so there's no reason to keep milling. Plays a land attacks with patchwork all right i'll mm, now let's not block we'll take three okay well there's finally another land i guess if that matters so i guess if they counterspell the cursed recording like if they have a counterspell and they counterspell it we put an artifact in the yard and that turns delirium on so we may as well cast this before combat they do indeed have a counterspell so i'm not gonna pay it don't pay it now delirium turns on and swing plus two menace our opponent just played themselves Ba-boom. You just got deliriumed. Round two on the draw. Hand is great. Definitely keeping. The blue-white land. All right. Play mountain go. Another tap land in a third color. All right. Watchdog in another land. Opponent casts piggy bank. Okay. Uh, if I burn it, they don't get the treasure and I get to attack them. Or I just attack if they block whatever and then I play cryptid inspector. I feel like it's better to just murder this and not let them have the treasure. Kill it. Combat. Attack. Cycles Dagger Maw Megalodon. Island. And casts Gremlin Tamer. Oh, we are snap murdering that. Get out of here, Gremlin Tamer. Nobody likes you. Attack with the Faithful Dog. Opponent casts Giant and Raging Courage. Oof. All right. Combat. Swing. If they block, they block. And then we just follow it up with two creatures. And then kill whatever they play next. They are blocking. All right. Deaths. Triggers go on the stack. Their thing comes back. We surveil. Under the skin, sure, top that. Land, this guy, hand that feeds, back to them. Man, if only we didn't use our two Scorching Dragon Fires on the previous two creatures, eh? Plays Diversion Specialist, and that gains haste. I assume they would attack us. Indeed, they will attack us. All right, so I either Inferno or I Under the Skin this turn, and I feel like I want to Under the Skin instead. Gets Delirium on, pumps this, makes this better next turn. All right, Under... Uh, if it's fear of being hunted, I want to flip it. So under the skin. Cursed recording, you say. All right. So we will manifest this and then get back cursed recording. Okay. Trigger. It's whenever something turns face up as well. Another term it turns face up. All right. Uh, turn this face up. Bam. Combat. Attack for eight. And this even has vigilance. Unable to scream on hand that feeds. All right. So we can just kill this and probably kill them. So let's Inferno. All right, combat. We have won the game. All right. So they're Jeskai stuff. All right. Um, I don't think we change anything. So let's just run it back. Maybe this deck is better than I thought it was because that was great. Also, the Cryptid Inspector is better than I thought it would be as well. Oh, uh, this is fine. We've got turn two removal, although we can't actually cast this on turn three, but it's still fine. No plays on turn two. Back to us. All right. Well, we have no plays on turn two either. So back to them. Cursed Windbreaker. All right. Well, it is what it is. Bend a plane. Okay. Well, you're a bit late, Glimmerlight. You're a bit freaking late. So I either just kill this right now or I go Glimmerlight and then next turn I have four mana and I can cast Fear of Exposure. If I kill it now, then next turn I have land, land. So land, Glimmer, and then I'm, I can't cast Fear. I can't cast like a whole lot of like anything if I don't just glimmer this turn. So I guess I'm glimmering this turn. Glimmer, trigger, equip to this guy. Back to you. All right, flyer hits us. Cast Glimmer Seeker. We're definitely killing that. 
Oh, finally. Man, this is awkward, isn't it? I guess cursed recording with the monstrous emergence is way better than doing anything else. I can always, like, fear, and then we kill this, or I can monstrous, and then we kill it, but heck, let's just cursed recording. Cursed recording! This just gives us so much to do next turn. And I do want a monstrous double kill their team. No, they have a bounce spell that also advances their board. Aww. And then we have to get hit again, and they make a glimmer token. Lame. All right, fine. God, like, I so want to just play Cursed Recording again, but then we're just so far behind, right? Like, I'm... If I don't do that, what else am I doing? I'm playing Fear of Exposure, tapping this down, tapping a land down, or I'm going... We can't just keep getting hit at the rate that we're getting hit is the problem. If I do play Cursed Recording here, then they attack, we block, uh, I don't know, this thing, and we take six damage and go to seven, and then we get to clean up basically their whole board next turn because we get triple removal. All right, let's do it. Cursed Recording. And another creature that stuns our guy. Come on. Come on, really? Five, seven, eight, ten. If this is a thing that is big enough, then we're dead. That was kind of ludicrous. All right, um... Yeah, I guess we're going to see if we're dying. Everything attacks. Oh, we're not dead. Problem is the fear of being hunted costs double red. So, you know. And you have a six drop that we can't kill. Well, we're, I think we're boned. So let's see. I can play hand that feeds and then I can copy Scorching Dragonfire, right? So this, you have to pay for it. So we go uh, hand that feeds, double Scorching Dragonfire, kill Glimmer Seeker, kill this guy, block here, we die. Man, that was lame. So lame. All right, we're done. All right, run it back. This guy's not really a three drop. He's more like a four or five drop, depending on what you get. All right, on the play. This is fine. Keep this. Land go. My loyal dog. Trigger. Uh, bin that. Playing the piggy bank. All right, well, we're going to kill it, I guess. Actually, do we just trade and play a three drop? It's more... Oh, cursed recording. We're definitely not killing it. Combat. Swing. They choose to block. All right, we trade. We make a treasure. We get to surveil. Norin, definitely don't want him at this point. Bin that. Play this. Play long neck. Windbreaker. All right, let's see if they block. Combat. Swing. They are blocking. All right. It was a gremlin tamer? They blocked with their gremlin tamer. All right, oh, that surprises me. Sure, play cursed recording. Vanish from sight. All right, top it. I'm surprised they're doing that now as opposed to waiting until my upkeep. Or my draw step, rather. So I know I can play fear of being hunted and attack them to get damage in, but I want to be able to do both of the other spells next turn. I can't guarantee hitting a sixth land to double Cursed into Scorch. So let's just play Cursed Recording again. All right. Well, we can double Scorch this at the very least. So tap, Scorch you, triggers, copy, target the same thing, resolve that, resolve this, kill your guy, cast Fear, play a land, combat, swing. Now we are unfortunately out of cards. So we do have to drop pretty well. Enduring Courage and a tap land. Well, drawing a land is not drawing well. I mean, I can attack into this. I guess if I don't attack it, then they can just equip Windbreaker to whatever. Attacking it is not great either, though. So, like, I guess the bigger problem is if they just go drop a big creature into play that's too big for Fear to actually block, equip Windbreaker to this guy. They probably can't do both in the same turn. The odds of me drawing the second Scorching Dragonfire to kill this are not great. All right, I'm just gonna... I'm not gonna attack. I'm just gonna pass to them. The reason I'm playing a land here and not holding it is because we have pure, uh, pure the past in our deck, which means that I don't want any cards in my hand in case I draw that. And you can say, well, why don't you just play the land after playing it? Because that means if I draw lands off of it, then I can't deploy them. Unable to scream. Well, all right. Equips the Windbreaker. Okay, that's not as bad as it could have been. It could have been a giant creature that hits us. So down to 19. Under the skin. Let's go. Copy. Under the skin. Copy it. All right, this, and then get back uh, Long Neck, I guess. Or I guess Watchdog. Let's get Watchdog. Then the second one resolves. Ooh, uh, okay, so oh, I can only get back permanence though, right? Yeah. So manifest this, and then get back Glass. And then we will play the Watch. Okay, they've conceded to that. Interesting. I didn't feel like we were, you know, we didn't have that locked up or anything. Like, obviously, we're in a good position, but we did not have that locked up. Round three on the draw. Uh, not great, but not bad enough to throw. I mean, obviously we need to draw a creature for this to do anything, but I'm okay with it. Alpha Frog is our opponent. Well, another card that we need to draw a creature in order to do anything. Watchdog. All right, time to draw a creature. 
Nope, not time to draw a creature. All right, back to them. Get hit by the dog. Plays Flesh Burrower. Trial of Agony, you say? Well, let's Glassworks the bigger creature. Kill the dog. And they chose to keep the card on top. Flesh Burrower hits us, and they didn't play anything else. All right, well, I have to choose two targets, right? Yeah, okay, so I can't do both. If I play this and I try to coordinate it and they have a removal spell, we just get blown the hell out. The fact that they didn't play anything and they're just holding up four mana tells me I should probably just pass. And even if they don't, then we can just do it next turn, knowing that they don't have removal. All right, they didn't kill it, which means they either don't have removal or they didn't consider this enough of a threat to burn a removal spell on. Dissection tools. All right, so we're just going to kill both of these. I would be incredibly surprised if they didn't attack here. They did not attack. All right, so the problem is if I go trial, they're obviously going to keep their manifest creature. And then the creature is, I have to double removal to kill it. So awkward. <sighs> mm -hmm. All right, trial. I'm definitely doing that regardless of what other options I choose. I assume they'll have their death touch guy die. And then that means this can't block. Yeah, okay. So combat, swing. I don't think I'm burning it on this because... I would preferably like to draw another creature and then be able to just use one spell to kill it. All right, they attack, no blocks, so we're essentially trying to race Batter Skull. Oh my god, it was a 7-6. Okay, well, there's a creature, so... And they have Murder Mana up, that's so bad. Actually, okay, yeah, so if this doesn't resolve, then... Like, if they have Murder, we just lose the game. So first thing we do is attack, swing. All right, no responses so far, play Hand That Feeds. Then coordinated, choose one or two target untapped creatures you control. So both of these. Then their guy, green. And if they just have murder in response to this, then we essentially just lose the game. No, they do have it. Well, I guess we take seven and hope somehow we can get out of this. Drawing cards. Oh, wait, can't they just unlock the other side? Why didn't they just unlock the other side? Then we would have been dead. Yeah, if they just unlocked Widow's Walk, we would have lost. Okay. Ugh, it doesn't matter anyway. I mean, I guess we can block it, but... Fear. I'm going to attack because if they have another removal spell to kill the hand that feeds, we were never going to win this game. Swing. I guess I can actually double bl block it, right? Yeah, I can. I guess I can double block it to kill it. Oh, wait, no, it has trample, right? Oh, no. Yeah, never mind. We're dead. All right, on the play. <sighs> the same kind of problem. All right, I'll keep. Land go. Land go. That's this dude. Dragon fire. No second thing. And we're not going to glassworks here. So back to them. Plays the, the door that draws cards. All right. Um, I guess I would rather manifest dread than kill that. So just back to them. Hedge shredder. All right. Well, I guess I'm killing that then. Exile, target enchantment, target artifact. All right. And we still didn't draw it. All right. Manifest dread. I guess I'll put Norin under here. Land, go. Five mana, fear of the dark. All right. Flip Norin. Actually big enough that Glassworks doesn't kill it. Oh, there we go. Watchdog, trigger, surveil. I feel like the fear of being hunted is just not not that great. I don't know. All right, let's let's bin it. And then coordinated clobbering, we can kill their guy. My thinking is like the fear of being hunted at this point in the game is not even really that good. And there's other things we could draw that are better than that. So I would rather just get rid of a land. Fear of exposure. Sure, we can glassworks that. Glassworks, kill it. Play flesh burrower, combat, swing. All right, ahead on the board, but way behind on cards. This is something big. What is this? Vile Mutilator, and then we have to sack a creature? All right, sack the the Watchdog so that we can... Yeah, okay. Mm. I can force them to block and give Death Touch to the Fear, I guess. So top this. So Fear, Combat, Attack with Everything, Death Touch this, and then they have to block, and then it'll die in combat. We're still way behind on cards, unfortunately. Sporogenic Infection, we lose our Death Toucher. Yeah, all right, so Death Toucher dies. At least if they're doing that, it's not as bad as, like, deploying a huge threat. Monstrous Revealing Spectral Snatcher in their hand? Yuck. And we've drawn a land. All right, well, play that go. Best draw we could hit is, is uh, the, the draw spell, Pure the Past. Or we could just keep drawing lands. That's That works too. Taken six. All right, Cursed Recording it is. Over to them. Even if we draw a removal, we can't even kill this because it has Ward. Yeah, they play a land, we take six. We're very close to dying. How do they just have nothing but gigantic creatures? All right, this guy. I'm going to chump block Spectral, I guess, if they don't have removal and take five and then still lose. Oh, they have a removal anyway. All right, well, how lame. All right, two and one. Well, 
what was our next draws? Land, glimmer light. Oh, so we're just not getting anything for a while. All right. Well, I mean, we didn't flood. We did draw two lands when we didn't want to, but we just draw like nothing. And our opponent, somehow, every single creature in their deck is just giant. But it is what it is.